Today is Good Friday 2020. I'm doing this Good Friday reflection primarily for the members of my congregations because of course our churches are locked because of this coronavirus. So I'm here in the chapel of the orthopaedic hospital near Oswestry, which is my other job. Thank you for joining me. Good Friday. And we think of Jesus hanging upon the cross. Around him is a crowd of people. They are spitting, they're laughing, they're jeering and mocking. A little further away, we're told, there are some women, Mary, Jesus' mother, Mary Magdalene, and several others who were named in the Gospels and others not named. And there's one man, one of the 12 disciples, John. What happened to the other 11? Well, Judas, of course, at this time, is locked in the darkness of his own despair. Somehow he has removed himself beyond the reach of God's mercy. And some people do that. But the other ten, well, they're not there because of the risks, mostly. Jesus is a condemned criminal now, condemned for blasphemy. And that means that they are also pronounced guilty. So they could be arrested at any time. And to go to the cross of Jesus, where the Roman authorities are and the temple authorities are, and be recognised as his followers, could have easily meant arrest for them. So the risk they would have thought was just too great. And also watching Jesus hang there, suffering, dying. For some of them, it, I'm sure it would have been too much to bear anyway. So the ten are staying away. John and the women are there at a distance. I heard on the radio this morning a woman being interviewed and talking about going to see her husband dying in hospital. She said two and a half weeks ago um, he went off to work and he seemed fine and then at work he started to develop the symptoms of the coronavirus, he was taken into hospital, he tested positive and um, the hospital rung her up and said that um, she couldn't go in to see him because of the risks of the virus. And then they rang her, I think this would have been a couple of days ago on Wednesday, and they told her that he'd come to the end, and that he was very close to dying. And she begged them, desperately begged them to let her go to him. So they, um, they said she, they would ring her back and they obviously talked among themselves at the hospital and they said to her, you can come for 10 minutes. And so she came and she took her two teenage children and they were given all the protective clothing and they were told they could go in. They couldn't touch him, of course. They couldn't go near him. They had to stand at a distance. He was on a ventilator very weak, too weak to talk to them. But they were able, in that 10 minutes, they were able to tell him that they loved him and say their goodbyes. In John's Gospel, we know that there was one moment towards the end where Mary, Jesus' mother, Mary Magdalene and John did get close enough to the cross, not to touch Jesus, but to be recognised. And we know that Jesus spoke to them. Jesus was very weak and dying on the cross in three hours. He only opens his mouth seven times and then just to say a few words. But one of those times he talks to his mother and to John. We don't know what their reply was. 
I'm sure they would have said something. They would have told Jesus they loved him. They would have said their goodbyes. We don't know what they said. But we know that Jesus saw them, recognised them, knew that they were there, talked to them, looked into their faces. And that would have been a huge comfort for him on Good Friday, I'm sure. Now, the woman who was interviewed this morning on the radio, she said that her husband had not died yet, that the hospital were amazed that he was still going on. I don't know, maybe he found a bit of extra strength from hearing his wife and his children there beside him. She said the hospital still couldn't offer any hope that he would recover. And I'm sure she is praying for an Easter miracle. Many people this Friday, thousands of people who have loved ones with the coronavirus, either in hospital or at home, they will be praying. And thank God for most of them, their loved ones will recover. They'll get their loved ones back. And that will be their Easter miracle. For those of us Christians, we have our Easter miracle on Sunday. And we will be filled with joy and new hope. But today... For Good Friday. We sit at the cross with Jesus. We watch him who on that Good Friday bore the sufferings of the world and we know that he still does. <laughs>